Wednesday, October 11, 2017. This is Journal TV, and I'm Jerry Clark. It's time for the news. The Clifton Forge Rescue Squad came to its fourth public session on Tuesday night, hoping for a positive nod on its request to relocate at the old radio station property on Ingle Street. But it was not to be. The planners came to a tie vote on the issue, and soon thereafter, the Clifton Forge Town Council denied the request. It appears it's back to the drawing board for the squad as it seeks a new location for its local headquarters. Watch. We need a, we need so you're making a no vote on the council on Okay, I lost me. Where are you voting? You're voting on the conditional use permit. Um, yes. Council on No. Vice Mayor Heller. Uh, I think this is extremely difficult. Um, I would certainly like to know if there are other options that could be considered. So right now, because of what the community has, the feedback that I've received as far as safety and that type of thing, I've been voting on. Mayor Brayton. My main issue is the safety program part of it. Prior to the Clifton Forge Town Council meeting, the Clifton Forge Planning Commission met on the Clifton Forge Rescue Squad issue. Here's Planning Commission member Matt Campbell on why he voted no. Listen. The issue that you know, is, uh, is on my mind as a Planning Commission member, not as an individual citizen who'd be happy to have the squad just two, <laughs> two blocks away from their house, uh, but you know, we've been tasked as a planning commission to look at future uses of land and that kind of thing in the town of Clifton Forge. One of the issues that we identified in, uh, in developing our comprehensive plan was housing. Uh, we identified that and I think that the town through their adoption of the comprehensive plan also echoed the issue of housing. And, and that was my concern is that uh, the uh, use of that land, which is one of the last areas that we have that has easy access to all the utilities, uh, good transportation, uh, if we start to use that for other uses, just as we talked about business uses, uh, we severely limit the housing opportunities, even though there's nothing existing now, but it takes away from what we could do in the future. And as a member of the Planning Commission, I think it's part of my role to take that into consideration. And, uh, I still am not aware of anything new that would, would change my opinion on that. The Covington City Council meeting was full of news, mostly good on Tuesday. The council honored two of its recent retirees, moved forward on a big radio communication system and landfill issues and more. Listen. We had a wonderful last day of work, his last day of annual leave, we made him come to work. <laughs> we, made, we made him clock in, put him right out there with Bob. Uh, we had a wonderful luncheon together, complete with caprices, banana pudding. Couldn't ask for a better time. Uh, we shared a lot of laughter. Uh, got a little weak at times, which is okay. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, thanks to guys like this, at 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning on really cold nights, you got water. And it's not that way in a lot of things today. Uh, we will miss Leroy. We have missed him. He comes over and visits and cuts a shine with us every now and then. Uh, but these folks are few and far between anymore. And Six years of dedicated service to the City of Covington Police Department. From 1979 to 1983, and then from 1985 to 2017, and Chief of Police and City Manager from 2012 to 2016, and police chief from 2003 to 2017. Wow. And we'll be right back. Tuesday, 
Jackson River Technical Director Glenn Spangler told the Joint Board of Control that enrollment was slightly down. But later, board members got some first-hand positive experience with the center's carpentry class with instructor Jimmy Fridley. Watch. We've dropped six students overall from that last initial set that I gave to you. Gained three second semester, but again, those are just preliminary numbers, nothing official. You talk right. about a job that's really rewarding. This is probably one of the most rewarding jobs I've ever had. And uh, I don't think I trade for anything. So, uh, but it's really, it's an awesome job. Cornelius Foreman, 51, a Lomore resident, was arrested on a warrant charging him with sexual battery, kidnapping, and carjacking in connection with a 1998 Florida rape case. Mr. Florman has a rap sheet with other sexually related offenses and charges in several states. He now finds himself in the Allegheny County Jail awaiting extradition. Oftentimes, street and alley abandonments are relatively simple items for governments. But that was not the case last night in Covington with respect to a section of Riverton Road. Mike Persinger, representing Kemper Properties, asked for the measure. Jack Waldron, a well-known area businessman with property interests nearby, disagreed. The council decided to move ahead with the abandonment process. Listen. Uh, we are a 24-7 operation, and safety has become a, an issue for us. We've had everything from pedestrians, people on bicycles, cars, driving into the property, for whatever reason, uh, I don't know. And it's become an issue because we have trucks coming in now, some of them ours, some of them other companies. And the trucks aren't expecting the people to be there, and the people aren't expecting the trucks to be there. We've had some close calls. And I really think that you're sort of trying to kill an ant with an elephant gun here. I don't think that's really necessary. I think we need to think of the long-term ramifications of closing this road. Now, I'm sure that Dawn is a good business, but is Dawn going to be around forever? I don't know. Do you really want to give away a road that you can't get back? The Covington School Board honored several retired teachers on Monday evening and passed several resolutions with respect to school bus drivers, the school lunch program, and an anti-bullying measure. Watch. Yeah, 169, 59 years of service to education. And now a word from our sponsor. Let's take a look at some upcoming events and a birthday. Now for local obituaries. Jack Weeks, 73 of Fairley, died Saturday. His funeral was held earlier today at the Johnson United Memorial Church in Alderson. 
Helen Wolf, 78, of Covington, died on Monday. Her funeral was set Friday at the Eric Funeral Home. Reverend Walter Corner, 71, of Lewisburg, died on Tuesday. His funeral was set Thursday at the Wallace and Wallace Funeral Home. And Davis Futch III, 85, of Lexington, died September 21st. A memorial service will be held in his honor on November 18th at Lee Chapel in Lexington. Let's check out the local weather forecast. On Thursday, it should be partly cloudy with scattered showers, high of 73 and a low of 57. On Friday, it should be partly cloudy with scattered showers, high of 69 and a low of 55. On Saturday, partly cloudy, high of 81 and a low about 58. And that's the way it is on Wednesday, October 11th, 2017. More stories, photos, interviews, and other videos are available 24-7, 365 on AlleghenyJournal.com, YouTube, and on our Soaring Facebook page. Thanks very much for watching Journal TV.